back to channel now we are going to start the back of forearm and hand you can see this is a posterior side right so what are its surface uh, landmarks let us start this okay so this section we are mainly going to deal with the extensor retinaculum of wrist and also with the muscles of back of forearm and deep terminal branch of radial nerve and also posterior interosseous artery so this is about the outline of this section but mainly today now we are going to discuss about the surface landmarks of forearm and hand so if you see the first one you only say what we what you see mainly you see the olecranon process right so the olecranon process of the ulna this is the olecranon process of the ulna is the most prominent bony point on the back of flexed elbow and normally it forms a straight horizontal line with two epicondyles if you see it is straight horizontal line with two epicondyles that is the medial epicondyle and lateral epicondyle it forms a straight line right uh, so normally it forms a horizontal straight line with two epicondyles of humerus when the elbow is especially extended like this and an equilateral triangle uh, if you flex the elbow then you will see a equilateral triangle and uh, the relative position of three bony points is disturbed when the elbow is dislocated right so like that in dislocation uh, all these three points are disturbed next coming to the head of radius you can see here this is called as head of radius head of radius is palpated in a depression on posterior lateral aspect of an extended elbow just below lateral epicondyle this is lateral epicondyle just below it you can easily palpate this okay its rotation also can be felt mainly during pronation and supination so like this if you pronate uh, sorry yeah if you pronate and if you supinate then you can feel the uh, you know the head of radius next coming to the posterior border of ulna so if you see this sharp border is a posterior border of ulna okay the posterior border of ulna is subcutaneous and it, in its entire length it can be felt especially in a longitudinal groove on back of forearm when the elbow is flexed especially in a flexed position you can feel it and the hand is supinated so when the elbow is flexed and the hand should be supinated so like this like this okay in this position you can easily feel the posterior border of your ulna and the border ends distally in stylet process it distally ends in a stylet process over here okay and it separates the flexors from extensors of the forearm being superficial it allows the entire length of the ulna to be examined for the fractures so actually you know the front side will be the flexor compartment and this side now the side which you are seeing this is the uh, posterior compartment or the extensor compartment of your forearm right next coming to head of ulna everyone thinks uh, head of radius is here then where is head of ulna you may expect to be here right no but the head of ulna, ulna is here downward okay so head of ulna form a surface elevation on posterior medial aspect of the wrist in a pronated forearm pronated forearm means like this only this so this point is where you can feel the head of ulna so next coming to stylet process of radius and ulna so you can see this is the stylet process of radius this is the stylet process of ulna so they are important landmarks of the wrist the stylet process of radius can be felt in uh, upper part it can be felt in upper part of anatomical snuff box so in an anatomical snuff box you know already right this one is anatomical snuff box so in its upper part if you deeply palpate try to palpate it you can easily palpate the stylet process of radius especially okay and uh, the shallow process of radius is felt in upper part of anatomical snuff box it projects down one centimeter lower than stylet process of ulna so the latter descends from posterior medial aspect of ulnar head so the relative position of two stylet process in a dis is disturbed in the case of fractures at rest and also is a clue to proper realignment of fractured bones so whenever there is any fracture then you can observe easily there is a fracture um, points so that the stylet process of both are disturbed next coming to dorsal tubercle of radius also called as lister's tubercle and that can be palpated on dorsal surface of lower end of radius in line with cleft between the index and middle finger so where is the index finger this side where is the middle finger so this cleft in between here somewhere over here you can palpate the dorsal tubercle of lister okay of the radius in the line with cleft between the index and middle finger and it is uh, mainly grooved on the medial side by tendon of extensor pollicis longus so it is grooved by extensor pollicis longus you know extensor pollicis longus will be going to your thumb so it will be grooving it in the middle done next coming to anatomical snuff box it will be here right over here so anatomical snuff box is triangular depression on lateral side of your wrist right it is seen best when thumb is extended and it is bounded anteriorly 
bite and none of abductor pollicis longus extensor pollicis brevis and posteriorly bite and none of extensor pollicis longus about this we'll discuss later in detail so it is limited above by styloid process of radius and the floor of snuff box is formed by both scaphoid and trapezium carpal bones and also crossed by the radial artery so radial artery is also one of its content of anatomical snuff box so the heads of metacarpal form the knuckles so these are nothing but you can see here in the knuckles nothing but they are the heads of metacarpals okay so whenever you see knuckles this time think they are the heads okay just remember that they are the heads of your metacarpal bones okay so these are all the surface landmarks of your back of forearm and hand very simple so next we will start with extensor retinaculum